the aspect ratio, which is the length divided by the diameter, the anchorage, in this case hooked in, and the tensile strength work together to provide performance. The material spec for steel fibers in ASTM is AA20. It's a steel uh, specification, and it goes over the tensile strength, uh, minimums, uh, some of the tolerances that are required, sampling and testing. We're going to be making uh, flex rule beams for C1609 testing, uh, in which we test for a residual strength of the fiber reinforced concrete. We do routine backup, so we could actually go back uh, to infinity in terms of uh, the record trail of the steel fiber as it was introduced into the mix. DOT wants to know and be assured that this steel reinforcements in their product. Well, you don't see a single fiber uh, in, the, in the outside or inside of the box. The finish is just as good as a conventional box. You are looking at what they're all talking about. Steel fiber reinforced precast concrete products containing Beckhart Dramex steel fibers. Every year worldwide, six and a half million cubic yards of concrete are being reinforced with Dramex steel fibers. There are rock solid advantages in the use of Dramex steel fibers in concrete. The fibers are homogeneously distributed throughout the concrete, which ensures excellent reinforcement at the joints and the corners of precast concrete. With steel fibers throughout the mix, multi-directional reinforcement is accomplished, which provides a resistance to stress in all directions. Increased load-bearing capacity results as the steel fibers dosage and physical properties provide a substantial load capacity to first crack and ultimate load. High impact resistance is created because the absorbed energy in steel fiber reinforced concrete during impact is many times greater than the energy absorption of plain concrete. Excellent control of shrinkage cracks happens as the steel fibers present in the concrete intercept the crack at an early stage. You're probably wondering if the use of fibers in concrete is a new thing. Fibers in concrete is not a new thing. Uh, it's actually been around for thousands of years going back to the ancient Egyptians. Also in this country, in the USA, the oldest house in the USA is an adobe house reinforced with fibers. Fiber technology has been improved, however, greatly by Beckhart uh, starting in the mid-1970s. So we have an improved technology in Dramex steel fibers in concrete. At a ready mix plant, what does it take to thoroughly mix the fibers into the concrete mix going into the ready mix truck? Are the fibers multi-directional in the mix and ultimately cured concrete? Well, they're mixed integrally throughout the concrete. It only takes 70 revolutions or four minutes to mix the fibers front to back. The fibers are running three directional, uh, so they're throughout the concrete top to bottom to be better positioned to intercept crack and micro cracking that's going to occur as the concrete cures and contracts. And again, as I said earlier, to redistribute stress from loading. By binding the Dramex steel fibers into a clip, Beckhart creates fibers that do not experience clumping. The fibers are in this long clip because this particular fiber has an aspect ratio of 80. Beckhart found out years ago that the aspect ratio or length divided by diameter, which is what it is, when that is over 60, there are balling issues in the concrete. So we're playing a trick, Beckhart is playing a trick, if you will, on the concrete by lowering the aspect ratio by binding them together in a clip. The fibers are held together by a glue, which is softened when the, the fibers are introduced into the concrete, and then the mixing action of the aggregates break them apart. Dramex steel fibers mixed into the concrete at the Redimix plant with a minimum of four minutes or 70 revolutions of the truck drum, create a homogeneous distribution of the steel fibers in the concrete. Dramex steel fibers can also be added to a precaster's on-site mixer with typically no changes to the standard mixing time for a homogeneous mix. 
This three-way distribution eliminates some of the challenges facing inspectors who seek to verify the content and the placement of traditional rebar or wire mesh in precast forms. The steel fiber reinforced concrete, when it's placed into the forms, the inspector or the precaster don't have to, they don't have to worry about where the steel rebar or the wire mesh is within the forms. It removes the subjectivity of, of how it's placed, when it's placed, and whether it be misplaced or, or moved around during the pour. Beckhart has created a steel fiber handling system known as a tanker, which weighs up the fibers and adds them to the concrete mix at the ready mix or precaster's plant. The tanker system will be linked to the batching system, causing the steel reinforcing to show on the mix's batching tickets and can be kept on file. This means that an inspector can easily verify steel fiber reinforcing content. Beckhart also has a unique material handling tanker system, which we are looking forward to utilizing in that it provides a link to our software for our computerized batching panel. It provides a written trail to document for quality control oversight purposes that all of the steel fiber prescribed and the proper type of material was introduced into the truck. How far back in time will the inspector be able to verify steel fiber content with the precast product day of manufacture? Depends on the size of your hard drive. In our case, we, we do routine backup, so we could actually go back uh, to infinity in terms of uh, the record trail of the steel fiber as it was introduced into the mix. A former DOT employee re-emphasizes how the homogenous distribution and the batch ticket steel fiber verification will aid the precast product inspector. In my years of experience with the SEDOT, the inspector's role is to, ins to assure that, ensure that every bit of steel is in the, in the proper place. Often, inspectors can't be at the site when the pour is made. They're, they're having to rely on the precast to do the job or individuals to do the job at the precast plant. Here, steel fiber reinforced concrete, when that steel fiber comes to the precaster in the concrete itself, and it's verified that it's in the concrete by the batch tickets, the inspector is assured that the steel reinforcement is in the product itself. The concept is very progressive in using a tanker or an auger system to weigh and introduce the fibers into the concrete mix. Let's look at the equipment and the process in greater detail to describe just how accurate the system will be. The tanker system uh, appears similar to a small silo adjacent to the plant. It has its own weighing mechanism and it also interfaces directly with the computerized batch panels so it can be automatically initiated by the batch, batch man and weighed precisely. It will uh, weigh up and record a trail, a history of that if you will, then through an auger fed system it will introduce the fiber into the load again in conjunction with the aggregates, the sand and stone for a ribbon fed combination for a more homogeneous mix, all the while recording the trail of the actual weights of amount and amounts of material introduced into that particular batch. True, this is an impressive system for introducing and batching the steel fibers with the concrete. However, what happens if at the tanker there is a deviation or a shortfall in the amount of steel fibers? The system has a warning device that will, through both a, a bell and a whistle, provide an audio and a video uh, stimulus to the batch man that his, his uh, tanker needs more raw material, similar to how the batch plant, when, when the overhead bins for the plant become empty, if you've got min-max systems, it provides a warning so that you can then recharge the tanker, the silo full of Tramex product, to continue weighing and continue the, the record of how much was introduced. What is the ASTM material specification for Dramex steel fibers? The material spec for steel fibers in ASTM is AA20. It's a steel 
uh, specification and it goes over the tensile strength, minimums, uh, some of the tolerances that are required, sampling and testing. It also goes over the types of steel fiber. Uh, Dramic steel fibers are a type one steel fiber, meaning they're a cold drawn steel fiber. So as you draw wire, the more you draw it, you're mechanically working the fiber, properties are aligning, and you get higher and higher tensile strength because of the cold working. When they are manufactured, Dramic steel fibers are galvanized and contain an inhibitor. With our galvanizing, we have an inhibitor over the galvanizing to keep any of the hydrogen from forming because their galvanizing in concrete can form hydrogen bubbles around the fiber and then you have a weakened plane in the concrete. And you don't want a weakened plane in the concrete because that is where you're going to form a crack then. So with the inhibitor, the hydrogen bubbles are removed, there's no weakened plane in the concrete, and the other added benefit on top of the non-weakened plane is also the fact that then you don't get shadowing of the fibers in the concrete. By the way, the inhibitor has another feature which allows the Dramex fibers to be classified as green. A lot of people think we call it Dramex green because it kind of has a green tint to it, but this is the galvanization that you're seeing. And really, we refer to it as a green product because, uh, like I had mentioned, we have an inhibitor on it. Most inhibitors are uh, carcinogenic. Our inhibitor is not, so it's green, it's healthy, it's a non-carcinogenic inhibitor. Beckhart does extensive testing of concrete with steel fiber content, and the testing data is used in the design of steel fibers and the concrete mix specifications. The testing is important since not all fibers are the same. The composite strength of the steel fibers in the concrete is determined by aspect ratio, tensile strength, and anchorage. So we do a test with the steel fibers to prove their performance after the crack. And that performance is called, we call it an EFS, equivalent flexural strength of the steel fibers in the concrete. And we use that number to design. So it's a strength after a crack. And with all fibers or all kind of reinforcing, you need some kind of micro crack in the concrete to engage the steel. Uh, so that's what it's looking at. How much strength do the steel fibers contribute in the concrete? So we use that number to design with the steel fibers. The higher the EFS achieved, the higher the performance of the fiber in the concrete. Slump, weight, and air volume tests are conducted on the concrete with steel fibers at ReadyMix plants and also at precast plants prior to beam flexural strength test in the laboratory setting. The laboratory beam test is only conducted when there is a change from the initial mix design. For the slump test, we'll fill the cone in three layers by volume, uh, rotting each layer 25 times. And we'll pull our slump cone and we'll essentially see how much it, the concrete slumps measured in inches. Um, next, we'll then do the unit weight and we'll fill our unit weight bucket in three layers and rotting each layer 25 times. And after each layer, we'll also um, hit it with a rubber mallet 12 times. Then we'll get a unit weight in terms of pounds per cubic foot, and um, then we'll run our air content test to see how much, essentially, our volume of air. Next at the ReadyMix plant comes the making of beams, which will later be subjected to ASTM C1609 flexural beam testing in the lab. This test is done to establish the composite strength of the type of fiber and dosage in the concrete. If the mix design does not change, the composite strength will remain the same. Uh, typically, we take the beams and we'll place them on the ground on a level surface, and then we'll take the wheelbarrow and essentially dump the concrete into the beam. We will fill the beam in one uh, complete lift, and actually we'll be overfilling the beam so that we have sufficient concrete in the beam so that when we vibrate it, we essentially don't have gaps in the corners or on the top. So once we dump from the wheelbarrow in the beams, we'll then take them to the vibrating table and we'll externally vibrate them until they have proper adequate consolidation. We'll then strike them off using a trowel 
and then we'll move them to a location where they won't be um, bothered or bumped and also we'll cover them with plastic and burlap to ensure that there's no moisture loss and also uh, the temperature if it were cold the beams would not freeze. For ASTM C1609 beam test, what size beam would be made? Typically the beam size is governed by your fiber length and typically you want three times your depth in terms of your fiber length. So if I had a two inch fiber, I would want to cast it in a six inch beam. Whereas if you were testing a 1399 beam and your fiber was a two inch fiber, you would have to cast it in a six inch beam and then cut it down to a four by four by 14 inch beam. The beam tests are used to determine equivalent flexural strength or residual strength of the concrete and steel fibers acting together. The fiber's performance is based again on the aspect ratio, tensile strength, and anchorage mechanism. Residual strength means that after the concrete has initially cracked or reached its peak flexural stress, the amount of uh, stress that the fibers can hold after the cracking or sustain out to a certain deflection. After the beams have been made and temporarily stored, it's on to the laboratory for the actual test later. At the time of testing, whether it be seven or 28 days, we will then take the beams one at a time from the line bath and we'll test them uh, using a, a closed loop dynamic servo system in which we will break the beams under a, def a deflection controlled servo system in which the deflection will actually govern the rate of testing. Essentially, then what we get is a stabilized fracture from the beginning and then following the fracturing of the concrete, we'll have the residual strength values or a load versus deflection curve. This whole process takes approximately an hour of time. Now that we've covered steel fiber specs and testing, let's look at time and concrete construction improvements gained by using steel fibers in concrete. This is how a ready-mix producer views the time and labor improvements with steel fiber reinforced precast concrete. And the labor and time element involved to fabricate, cut, bend, well, and then place a steel cage in the form is, is, requires a lot of manpower in advance. We, with the steel fiber product, with Beckhart's Tramex product, we, we provide all of that reinforcing in the mix, hence cutting all of that labor as well as shortening the cycle time between pours by eliminating the labor on the front end and placing the cage in the form itself. This is how a senior precast manager views the same improvements. The time difference uh, is really an, uh, uh, where we foresee the savings. It's enormous. You don't have the, the steps that I described earlier with cutting the steel to fit, bending the steel around the corners of the box, tying the, the base slab into the, to the wall steel, cutting the hole out for the hole former, and then closing up everything. We can save um, between one and a half to two hours per box by eliminating those steps, basically using steel fiber. With no welding, bending, and lifting of steel, you reduce safety hazards for workers but you also minimize the chances for concrete segregation caused by over vibrating the concrete around the rebar and the wire mesh. You also eliminate the need to over vibrate the concrete. We don't have the, the added uh, conventional steel in there to get caught up. Uh, sometimes rock, rock get caught in the wire mesh and with the fiber it's just a very simple operation. You just run it down the corners of the box and on top of the base slab and it's vibrated. Steel fiber reinforced concrete is less likely to be damaged during the stripping of forms and there's less spalling and cracking of the concrete. How about the finishing and the final appearance of the concrete? You, well, you don't see a single fiber uh, in, the, in the outside or inside of the box. The finish is just as good as a conventional box. We trowel the, the tops of them and, and you, we have no issues whatsoever with fibers uh, ex extended uh, above the surface. When you look at the fully hydrated and finished precast concrete products at the plant, 
there are no fibers visible in the finish. Additionally, the steel fibers help prevent cracking and spalling at the edges or the corners of the concrete structure. This is a side-by-side -side comparison of a product that has experienced cracking without steel fibers and then product with steel fibers that has not experienced cracking and spalling. In closing, let's review again major advantages of the use of steel fibers in concrete. Homogeneous distribution yields fibers mixed throughout the precast product, ensuring excellent reinforcement at the joints and the corners of precast products. Improved inspection and reinforcement verification occur with the plant batch tickets documenting steel fiber content verification. Multi-directional reinforcement is accomplished as steel fibers provide a resistance to stress in all directions. Increased load bearing capacity results as a function of the fiber's dosage, aspect ratio, tensile strength and anchorage. The higher equivalent flexural strength, the higher the capacity of the composite steel fiber reinforced concrete. Steel fibers provide a substantial increase in load capacity to first crack and ultimate load at the joints. High impact resistance is created because the absorbed energy in steel fiber reinforced concrete during impact is many times greater than energy absorption of plain concrete. Excellent control of shrinkage cracks happens as the high number of steel fibers present in the concrete intercept the crack at an early stage. Time and labor savings occur because the precast plant workers don't have to fabricate, cut, bend, weld, and then place steel cages or wire mesh reinforcement. We hope today's presentation has been informative and encourage you to contact us at Beckhardt for more information about Dramex Steel Fibers.